Gain staging is an incredibly important step in music production, and Reaper has many tools at its disposal that can help you get the job done. And one of them is this. Rendering. Rendering? Wait, did, did someone write rendering in a script? Hi, my name is Alexi. I use Reaper to arrange, record, mix and master music. And yes, rendering is one of the ways you can help yourself gain stage, a fake rendering to be precise. There are a couple of scenarios where this feature can prove to be useful. Let me show you what I mean. As an example, I'm using All the Gen is Gone, record by Maurizio Pagnuti Sextet, apologies for pronunciation. You can download this and other multi-track resources at Cambridge Music Technology to practice your mixing skills. I'll leave the link to this platform in the video description below. Preview projects in a genre you like, download the archive and practice your mixing. This project is a good enough representation of how you may receive media from a client when mixing for someone. I already did some basic organizational steps, like project settings, tempo mapping, and also coloring and regions and markers placement. I'll also quickly do some bus tracking. I usually proceed to gain stage the material I'm working with after these organizational steps. And as you can see, I'm clipping from the very beginning on my master bus. Unsurprisingly, it is also shown on the dry output. Gain staging is a seemingly simple and obvious topic, but I've learned that there are very few, if any, things that you can call obvious in this world. YouTube has numerous useful tutorials about gain staging. I'll leave a couple of great resources on this topic in the description. If you'd like me to cover it here on this channel, leave your comment below. I'll do the job and you sit and relax. After I have processed the material a couple of times, I review it and see if it hits minus 12 dBFS at peaks with faders at unity level. The dynamics of the material can vary at different places, so don't assume your job is finished when you have staged each media to your preferred dBFS value. The dynamics of the instrument is especially problematic with soloing instruments like trumpet in this example or saxophone. This media source can cause us problems both in soloing regions as well as A or B section of the piece. Don't try to flatten everything out at minus 12, so some dynamic variation is actually a good thing. Due to environment I work in at the moment, I'm limited to using studio headphones only, and it can be fatiguing during long critical listening sessions. Using dry output render option, I can preview if I'm still clipping at any point on my master track without the need to fatigue my ears and wait for the entire project to play through. It is also possible you are safe in your verse while drastically clipping in chorus or solo region of the track. For that purpose I suggest you gain stage based on the chorus of your song or simply the loudest part of the track, which is often at the end of the track or during the solo of a specific instrument. You can see the trumpet part is significantly louder in this part of the track, which is the solo part, and if I gain stage based on this loudest portion, I will have the media under control here, and it won't clip, but the rest of the media will become problematic because how quiet everything has become in relation to the peak. For that reason, I have separated problematic peaks and treated them separately from the rest of the media. Again. Using dry output render option, I can quickly preview if I'm still clipping at any point on my master track. I can introduce small tweaks on a separate media item I have cut and output a dry render again. Needless to say, some problematic areas that you identify at this stage in your mix will require much more effects processing further down the road. But the dry output rendering option gives you a comfort of saving some time and going easy on your ears during the initial gain staging. It can be boring and exhausting for your ears at certain points, but it will pay off in the long run. 
It is crucial that you gain stage your material not only during pre-mixing stage, but also throughout your mix, but that's a topic for a different day. You can preview your chart in the web browser to see at which point in your project or in your specific regions of your project you are, let's say, dangerously close to clipping, like here, I'm very close to clipping. So this is a hint for me to go back to this place and treat it separately from the rest of the track. I now have enough of the headroom on the boss tracks, separate tracks and master track, and using dry output render option I have reached the stage much quicker. A quick disclaimer, while this feature can appear to be helpful in the majority of situations as a supporting tool to speed up the process, don't rely solely on the numbers and red colors that output shows. Always try to make gain staging decisions that are deliberate and not just based on math deductions against dry output report. Okay, so it clips uh, somewhere around here, and this dude told me I need minus 12 dBFS. Hmm, let me get my calculator. It can quickly become a crutch and hinder things in your project, only causing you frustration. Let me know if you knew about this feature in Reaper and if you use it very often. And if not, give it a try. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found that helpful. If so, I'd appreciate if you liked it and subscribed to the channel. If you have any questions, suggestions, I'd love to hear them in the comments section below. Be creative and nourish your thrill. Bye-bye.